Hey, what's going on folks? Clutch here, and I've got a brand new map for you today, a PC4X map. This is Midtown USA 2019. Like I said, a 4X map for PC only. Man, what did I speak about? This one is done by CCS101. I'll make sure I put a link down in the description so you guys can get a hand, get your hands on this map yourself as well. So like I said, PC only map, 4X, lots of stuff to do. There are several different farms. I think we've got six farms to take a look at today. So we'll take a look at all six of those farms as well. We'll look at a bunch of the cell points and some of the other interesting sites and scenes on this map. There's a lot more to do than just your standard stuff. Uh, we have some extra crops and we have some extra interesting sell points and purchase points that you're probably going to want to see. As we round the hill, you saw it back there, one mile to Midtown. We've got a little bit left, left to go. We have to get over top of that next hill. You're going to recognize, guys, this map looks very similar to a certain other somewhat popular map. In fact, if you're a long-term uh, fan of the Farming Simulator series, guys, you're going to definitely recognize, well, at least the central portion of this map. It does have that feeling, that's for sure. It's nice to it's nice to be back. Let me just put it that way. It's nice to be back. You know what? Let's uh, warp on in. We'll go take a look. Let's go start at, well, the main town area, shall we? And as we crest the hill, there is Midtown down below in the valley, as you can see it. Main through fair comes right on into town. You can see we've got fields all around the town, but it is a fairly substantial town site. There's a couple different smaller towns that kind of dot the landscape. I wouldn't even call them towns, maybe hamlets. But this here is the main center of activity. There's quite a bit to do even in here, guys. Uh, there's actually a farm that's built right into this town that you can purchase and have your main farm site directly in town. We'll actually head that way right now. I'll just let you scram over top of the buildings. Look at that, postal service. And we'll just go all the way through town here. And as we head to the main farm that's part of this town, we'll see a couple other nice little sites. We've got a motel below us as well. A couple of the random buildings. And then at the far side of the park, on our left, we're going to start going over towards our main farm that's, well, it's one of the base farms I guess you could start off at. So this plot of land right in front of us, guys, this is it right here. This is one of the farms. In fact, if you start off on new farmer mode, all your equipment is going to spawn inside this building right here. And you start with quite a bit. In fact, you know what? We should take a quick look inside just to show it to you. You don't technically own it. Just be aware. It's a little bit interesting as you don't actually own, the, own any plots of land. If you start in new farmer mode, you still have to buy the land which is an interesting way of doing things. Uh, but all the equipment that you own will start in here. So you can take all the equipment to whatever farm you want. And you start off with quite a nice selection of equipment. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to go through everything, but you guys get a pretty good idea if you see what you got here from a large ideal to the uh, the Fent, a couple of Massey Ferguson's. And then even the back, you got the JCB way on the back with a large grain auger wagon over there. Um, quite a large complement of equipment, guys. And then in the back, we also have a crone. <laughs> We have a crone inside the shed right here as well. So there's quite a bit of equipment you're gonna start with with new farmer mode. If you wanna start off with what uh, what the developer thinks is gonna give you a, a lot of options, go with this. Now guys, you've pretty much seen all of farm one, I'm gonna call this, or the city farm or town farm. There's not much to it. There's not a lot of room to develop anything else on it. In fact, there's not even really a silo here. So if you're gonna take this area, just be aware that you're gonna have some struggles. That being said, you're gonna be super close, of course, to any of the cell points. Uh, that are in this area and just great access to that and you got some fields that are all dotting this area some smaller fields that kind of dot the town but just be aware of that so no silos or anything like right, anything like that right here it's just you've got a nice close proximity and a very large building to start with as well and speaking of which the two cell points in town will you have a cotton shipper right here this would be the cotton cell point right on the end and on the far side we have potatoes as well that kind of <laughs> break in your farm side right on each side so there you go you've got a couple of uh, interesting cell points on either side of you now let's move along we're going to head over top the hillside here and this is be where you kind of start to recognize something um you're going to notice there's a train depot here this should give you a bit of a hint there's a train depot right on the far side there and that train depot is going to go through this mountain and the tunnel and come out the far side cresting over top of the mountain here we do have a flour mill right here along with another train station area now, guys, if we look off to that direction over there, I'll look you up a little bit. Down in the valley, you can see in that straight direction is the town site. This here is the other train depot. Now, this may look familiar to you guys. In fact, what I would call the base farm for this is right ahead of us. So you've got the train depot, town, and the base farm. And we're going to kind of scan over there. Let me know when you guys think you recognize what this map is kind of close to. As we get close to this, this should start to feel very familiar. Up on the top of the hill there on our right, that is our equipment dealership. And then the main farm, I'm going to say this is our main farm, is right down in here. Yeah, this is cool. Farm is a little bit different than what you may have be used to. 
Now, like I said, Farming Simulator 15, guys, this would have been, well, a base map. I think I've given it away now, haven't I? And if not, maybe you should go download Westbridge Hills because this feels very similar to Westbridge Hills in so many ways, only there's a lot more to it. So this here is the main farm on Westbridge Hills, or it was back in Farm Sim 15 as well, I should say. But you can see it's still a very good sized farm on this map as well. Uh, you've got silos on both sides, some very large shops down the middle, and then a silo system on the back, a very large silo system with a dryer system there as well. Right down in the bottom, some water as well. And then a main house. I believe that's the Lone Oak house, actually. Let's zoom on down. Right inside. Yeah, you got your house right there. And then large fields that kind of surround this one as well. Very flat down in here. Minor hill grades that kind of go up and down. On this side here, it gets a little bit steeper as you go back towards town and over towards that train track. Now, speaking of train tracks, actually, we should probably mention this quickly as well. The trains themselves, they run on a bit of a different schedule. They have a kind of a randomized schedule. They run in both directions, and there's also several different types. Well, I think there's a couple, at least, different types of trains you're going to see on these tracks. It's very quite, quite interesting. There's three different sections of tracks that run through tunnels. You can see there's one back there, one behind us. We're in the middle section right now. Uh, the gates do work, of course. And as well, the lights that tell you which way the next train is going to be coming. So you can tell right now, no trains are going the direction we're going. They're all going to be coming that way. So right behind us, I guess we should watch our back. I would also be a little bit remiss not to mention this tiny little landmark on the map. Um, yeah, I think you, you kind of you can't really miss it, I guess. But uh, I, I guess I should probably tell you guys about it. Look at that. That is, that is impressive. I wish a train was coming right now, but like I said, random times, they're pretty tough to find when they come out. And straight south from that massive bridge is the dairy farm. This is in the very southwestern corner. We have the main dairy farm. This could be a farm you could take up. You got a nice house right there with the pool, large silo system, and shops down in the back, silo system on the far side, and then a very large cattle pasture off the back here, guys. This is the very back corner of the map. Very sweet looking. Look at that. Looks great. Moving back closer to, well, the Westbridge farm, which is, well, right in that little valley ahead of us there. This here is another farm area, guys. There's a farmhouse right here. A little bit more um, rustic, I guess you could say. This here is a farm area. Also in behind us, guys, you've got the shop area right here uh, with an interesting looking pig enclosure. We can kind of scroll down and in. There you go. Nice looking pig enclosure right here. Uh, nice pig sty. Very large, actually. Pretty large pig sty all the way through. That's included with this farm. Nice big open area. Look at that. Now, on the back side of that, there is the BGA. Of course, that is kind of the same location as Westbridge, you might remember. And in behind, over on the far side over there, is a wood chip uh, area as well you can sell to. And now we're back just north of the main town site. Another small farm. We've got our farmhouse. A small barn and then on the back side guys there is well a horse pasture that's what this one focuses on a horse pasture on this back side that's all there is on this one another small farm once again though and for our last farm is the beef farm down in the southeastern corner you got your house down right on the corner here uh you got some quonset and some small lean-to shops there you go there's your cattle area right off the back for the large pasture Nice looking one. Now, the other interesting thing about this farm, guys, it's right at the entrance of something a little bit different. And you know what? We need to discuss this field first. But um, this field is the biggest field on this map. Absolutely massive. Look at the size of this field. And there it is on your PDA, field 37. Uh, you can see, actually, when you go to purchase it, you take up quite a large amount of uh, a land there. Quite a large land mass. Yeah, it's value 1.3 million. So really not too, too bad as far as costs go. Now, if I zoom out, you can kind of get a better idea how big that map, that field is. Uh, the rest of the fields, guys, fairly all over the map size, I guess. There's some good size fields. As we go closer into town, some smaller fields. There are 50 fields in total on this uh, this map, all varying sizes. This 37, 40, massive, absolutely massive fields. But I mean, you even saw the ones where we entered in town. So this would have been the road up here that we were coming in on town on. Those are the fields up there, 9, 15, 10. You would have saw those. Fairly good sized fields as well. They don't look that big on the PDA, but guys, they're still a pretty good sized field. So moving back away from this massive field, as we go back towards this last farm we just talked about, this is an entranceway as well to the limestone system. You can get lime here. This is a lime sale point. And it's not just like a normal sale point where you just go into a silo. Guys, this is an actual mine pit you drive down into. Once we get over top the ridge here, you're going to see it. There we go. And all you got to do, guys, is drive up to this conveyor belt down at the bottom here with your trailer unit. 
hit the activation button and Bob's your uncle, you got lime. Interesting way of getting lime. This is pretty cool. On the way back, leaving the area, guys, you're gonna go past Valley Recovery Metals. Just an interesting little junkyard. Now, the funny thing about this is if you end up recovering a vehicle or resetting a vehicle, it's going to recover into this area. Now, that sounds all good and great and all. However, there are hours of operations for this. They can all be found. Oh, where are they? I saw them right here. We have our hours of operations. If you are outside these hours of operations, these gates are closed and you cannot get your equipment out of there. Just be aware of that. So if you're here on a Sunday, for instance, you're not going to be able to get your tractor out of there. It's going to be locked in here until the next day. <laughs> I've had that happen. Just saying. Now, guys, that also goes for a lot of the other cell points as well. For instance, Valley Farmers, Co Farmers Co-op here, the uh, dump area will be closed off during non-hours of operations. You're going to have some barricades that are out in front here that make it so you cannot unload. Just be aware of that. There's certain hours of operations for a lot of the buildings on this map. And just down the road from the co-op, we're at Farmland, which is fertilizer and seed purchase. We can zoom around, take a look quickly around this shop area. Up in the northeast corner, we are at the sawmill with a large forestry area in behind. We'll zip around here quickly. Now, the interesting thing about this, once again, I think we've seen this several times. There is a spot where you can actually enter inside the sawmill down there. You can see the door. But you'll need to put your logs on this large pad right here where it's marked off and then go in and hit the activation button to sell. That's all that's required for this sawmill. Kind of an interesting uh, design and also a, uh, a wood chip trigger if you're looking for wood chips. And not too far from the sawmill is this grain fill area right here. You can't sell grain or anything from this area, but you can purchase grain. Uh, all your main grains can be purchased here directly if you would like. And then just one field down from that is a straw sale or a bale sale area as we go down here. This is not a farm you can purchase. It does look like one, but it's not a farmhouse that you can actually use. But there is a bale sale area just inside this red barn down here. You toss your bales in and there's a bale sale in there. Oh, look, there goes the train now right through that main silo system. Guys, there is also a seed cell point right over in this neck of the woods here. And of course, you have anhydrous. You got anhydrous on this map. That is very cool. This is right next to the Westbridge Hills farm. I'm calling that so very close by. Uh, and then, of course, the long train is rolling through the valley there, and that's going towards town right now. And just up the hill, you may remember from that Westbridge farm, guys, there's a bunch of sell points up here as well from well, livestock sales. Uh, there's an egg sell point. There's several others that I can't even remember all of them off the top of my head. The whole market area is up here as we kind of scroll through. You can see the spinnery. Yeah, a silo system right over there. There is a whole bunch up here as well that you can purchase and sell from. Uh, this is always a, a bit of popular area as we scroll on through and head back out and out towards town. So on top of the anhydrous, guys, as far as specialty crops go, you do also have a flower area to sell production to. You have a composting area, of course, as well as there's an orchard that produces apples, which is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, the apples will sell the, uh, the farmer's market and the flower sells, of course, to the valley shipping area. As we scroll over top towards town here, guys, you're going to see we've got... Well, you may recognize this. Once again, the... Uh, <laughs> the outdoor drive-in theater that is uh that's kind of a classic for for west Hitch, isn't it that looks fantastic and of course now when i'm not waiting for the train it's gonna roll right on through town look at that that looks so good one of the other custom trains so also on this map guys you're gonna get dynamic mud as well as custom delivery missions which is always kind of a nice add-on look at that i'm not waiting for the train we've had two go by in the last like five minutes and there, guys, I think I've got all the major hit points on the map. I think I've shown them off everything you need to see, want to know about on this map. There's a, quite a bit to it, so you're going to need to get in here and give it a shot yourself, I think. But anyways, I think we'll head back out of town. Um, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, you know what to do. Slap that like. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. And of course, this video sh or this map should be available for download by the time this video is released. And as long as it is, I'll make sure there's a link down in the description below for you so you can go download and give it a shot yourself. And of course, guys, if you have any questions on any of this map or if I've missed something that uh, maybe needs to be addressed more or something that you know about this map that maybe I didn't talk about, put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys there. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and we will catch you next time. This is Glutch. Over and out.